Dave and Buster's shares have been declining as of late. And that's been getting me a little bit excited into this opportunity. And that's what I'm going to discuss in this video. So guys, smash that like button and subscribe if you're new. You're watching more money. Let's get it. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel where the goal here is to help at least a thousand people achieve financial independence much sooner. And let's dive right into this. So you can see here that of the companies that I'm following, the month over month decline in the share price for Dave and Buster's is only second to Target. And we're well aware of why Target's share price has declined close to 30% over the past month. But Dave and Buster's is down 21%. So the question is, why is Dave and Buster's shares down so much? And from here, you can see that it's largely been a wild ride for Dave and Buster's shareholders. If you purchased this security five years ago in 2017, I guess, you would have been down half your money. But during the pandemic, this actually went down to under $10 per share. Now, I was buying it in late 2020 and ended up selling it in mid 2021 made a little bit of money there. But the biggest regret that I actually had is I didn't buy more of it when I saw the opportunity. At around $14, $15 per share, I really wanted to back the truck up, but I just never did. I was a little bit gun shy, but I might get this opportunity once again as the share price continues to decline. So it's been a bit of a wild ride. You know, you had that rush in 2020 into 2021, and now you're starting to see it decline back again. And so what is this company all about? Well, you can see that Dave & Buster's is a very unique type of offering where you can go there to have food, you can go there just for drinks, and you can go there to play games or watch sports. And they have an exclusive agreement with Bellator, which is really cool because I happen to be a big MMA fan. I love watching the Bellator fights and the UFC fights. So it's a very awesome place for me to go. I don't think they do UFCs, but they do do the Bellators. And so the more interesting thing is the item that I highlighted, which is that the pandemic showed retail space holders just how important diversification is. Dave & Buster's offers not just diversification, but also a pull to the retail location, which potentially makes the other lots more valuable. So with Dave & Buster's, you have this unique offering, which is great for retail landlords at the exact same time where you need someone to come in and take over space from retailers that have gone out of business or are going out of business, and they simultaneously pull people into the location. So how great would it be if you had a Dave & Buster's a gym, a grocery store, et cetera, et cetera. So just a completely diversified offering. So as a commercial property REIT, you're hedged to all potential issues that could happen in the economy and the market overall. Who knows, we could have another pandemic for all we know. And so that's why I think Dave & Buster's is really important. Now, they actually have been changing the mix of the business. This is why it's actually hard to look at Dave & Buster's results year over year historically. If you take a look over here, notice that in 2006, when I actually first started going to Dave & Buster's, it was more of a restaurant focus. You can see that approximately 60% of their revenues came from food and beverages. And since then, they've really been switching into an entertainment focused type of business. And what that does, obviously food and beverage is a lower margin business and obviously entertainment, playing games at Dave & Buster's is a higher margin business. So you can see that their EBITDA margin has almost doubled from 11% in 2006 to 21% in 2019. So they're making the business better overall. But the question is, how does it stack up against other food and beverage restaurants? You can see here that just as a standalone restaurant, just with their food and bar, they're already pretty competitive they would sit at the high end of the, generally the other competitors of restaurants that they would compete against. But once you add in that games element, they're pretty much at the top with an 82.8% gross margin. And what that really does is it feeds into the bottom line. And so obviously they have industry leading store level EBITDA margins. And in some cases they're double competitors. Now moving on, they are focusing on a new store economic model because the situation here really is that in North America, they believe that they can get to around 230 stores nationally. And at the end of 2022, they had approximately 144 stores. So they really think that they can almost or I guess near double that. And the way that they're going to do that is they have three different types of economic models. They have the new small store, they have their medium store, and then they have their large store. And they really believe that the cash on cash returns for each of these stores with strong operating margins of at around that 30% range would make the cash on cash return approximately 30 to 40%. So in other words, 
they're targeting very high cash on cash returns in excess of 25%. So if you're going to reinvest capital to double your footprint, you should be doing it at high return on invested capital rates above 25% is phenomenal. And that's exactly what they're doing. And in addition to that, it looks like they have an acquisitive strategy as well. But and this is a bit of an interesting acquisition because Dave & Buster's current CEO, I think is looking to step down because they just announced an acquisition of main event for 835 million. However, main events current CEO is expected to become the CEO of the combined entity going forward. Now, this acquisition, just my perspective on it, I think they acquired main event at a very low multiple, uh, buying them at nine times main events, 12 month adjusted EBITDA, I think is a very low but bootstrap type transaction. I think overall it looks very good. And how are they gonna be paying for this? Well, they're expecting to utilize cash on hand and proceeds from bank financing. So a little bit of cash, a little bit of debt. I think overall, this transaction looks very good and we'll see how it combines into the results in the next couple of quarters. And you can see here that prior to COVID, Dave & Buster's was actually opening stores at a very fast clip, especially in 2017 and beyond. You can see that they're opening up a ton of stores every year. And of course you can see that in 2021 and in 2022, the number of stores only increased by 2.9% each year. And that's obviously because they had to slow down the number of stores that they're opening in the challenged COVID environment. But it's very likely that they will return to opening stores at a fast clip, especially considering that they're looking to near double their footprint. However, in my valuation, I'm actually a little bit conservative here. I'm saying that in fiscal year 2023, which is this current year for them, they'll open about 10% more stores, but then I bring that down. So they probably will likely grow faster than what I'm forecasting. However, I like to be a little bit conservative on this number. And then of course, that's obviously going to result with me being conservative on my valuation. Now moving into the valuation, you can see here that using a discounting EPS approach with a 20 times multiple and a terminal rate of 11.5%, I'm valuing the company at approximately $61 per share. However, I'm penalizing them for all of that debt that they took on, especially during COVID. And so they have a tougher balance sheet right now. And so because of that, their valuation is actually $52 per share. But compare that with the current share price of approximately $39 per share, their price to valuation isn't looking that great, it's around 75%. So I always like to buy companies for about half of their intrinsic value. So it's not really looking exciting there. However, there is a hidden opportunity here. So you can see here that the $25 cash secure puts, remember, we're valuing this company at approximately $50 per share. So at 50% of their intrinsic value, which is the $25 cash secure puts, you can see here that you can probably sell them Anywhere between the bid and ask price, I'm saying you can probably get around $3 per share. So at $3 per share, what exactly does that mean? Well, these are the January 20, 2023 cash secured puts. Well, on the tracker, you have the cash secure put analysis tool, which you can see right here. So I threw in the put strike date, I put in the put num amount, and I put in the put premium. And you can see that obviously it's a net purchase price of $22, which is a 25 minus a three. But notice that it's a 12% put yield, but a 19.1% put yield. So essentially what's happening here is best case scenario, you're exercising on this cash secured put and you've purchased this security by January of 2023 which is not that far away for a net purchase price of $22 per share which means that you bought Dave and Buster's for a forward PE ratio of approximately nine and a half times earnings worst case scenario you made 19.1 percent which is your annualized put yield so no matter what you win on this hidden opportunity that exists for the security right now. And so the question is, how do you get access to that model and that cash secured put analysis tool and everything else that comes with what the Patreons get access to? Well, you can get it at the lower tier of the membership level for the Patreons. And like I always say, if you decide to join and you think that it's not for you after trying it out, no problem, message me in the app and I'll fully refund your first month subscription. So once again, no risk to you. And I recently put out a video on how Sleep Number and Zillow have been big losers in the current environment. However, I think Zillow, which is a part of my portfolio, is a very interesting opportunity. And so in order to get access to that video, click right here.